temporal bone on the side. In this visual, the temporal bone is yellow. And you can see, I don't know about you, but I look at the temporal bone and I'm like, oh, there's some stuff happening there. That's a weird looking bone with lots of things poking around and hopefully some structures that you actually already know. There are four foramina that you are required to know that are actually holes going through the temporal bone. And one of them you can see right here, and I'm going to tell you where it is because just 100% because, dude, it's right there and it's, it's really pretty. Isn't that pretty? That's your external auditory uh, meatus. Let's see what we call it in here, or canal. It will, I'm cool with canal. Um, and check it out in rainbow marble, rainbow skull. You can see that hole right there. It's big. It's on the outside. It's your external auditory. It's in the ear zone. That one's easy. <clears throat> Do you notice this giant kind of um, bump? on your temporal bone. You can actually palpate your temporal bone right now behind your ear. There's that big old bump and you already know it because what muscle do you know attaches to that bump? Uh-huh. Let me flex that muscle for you. I mean contract that muscle for you. And check it out. It's attaching right here to my temporal bone. To what part of my temporal bone? That's the mastoid process. Now, another landmark on my temporal bone, my mastoid process is here and you can feel that. I also have this like, what the, it looks like a tooth. It looks like a, a dragon tooth or a, I mean, cause you know, we've all seen dragon teeth before. It's this giant sharp pointy thing coming out nearby your mastoid process. And it's called the styloid process. And I don't know, to me, styloid sounds like pokey things. So I think that it must have a similar meaning. On our plastic skulls, there's the styloid process. It's like, it's super obvious and you're like, oh, I will never get confused about the styloid process because it's so obvious. On um, our real skulls, I think there's one of our real skulls that has an amazing styloid process, but after that, they are not amazing. And it's because, can you imagine how easy that thing is to break off when punk students go around throwing our skulls into the bone boxes? Yeah, or the femur goes throwing into a bone box. Don't throw the skulls. And while I'm here telling you what not to do, don't, this is really tempting. When you are studying the skull, when you come to class, don't use a pencil as your pointer and certainly don't write on the skulls. I was just looking at skulls today and there was like writing on them. Are you kidding? I won't use a written on skull for a quiz. So, and plus if I see you writing on your skull, you're going to have to like, uh, uh, buy me a new one, which you can imagine that that's not a cheap endeavor. So don't write on them and, and don't use your pencil to point. Because if you use your pencil to point, then you write on them. I will provide you with pointers, these lovely soft pipe cleaners to point. And that's perfect. Why did I go off on that little tangent? Oh, because we have to be nice to our skulls to protect our styloid processes of our temporal bones. All right. One more process on our temporal bone that's crazy obvious. Who's this guy, do you think? Yes, my friends, you can feel it. Feel it all the way over here. Uh-huh. That's actually part of the zygomatic arch. The zygomatic arch is interesting because it's the entire cheekbone. Look at this whole thing. That whole thing is a zygomatic arch, but there is a temporal bone part of it and a zygomatic bone part of it. And so the whole thing makes up your zygomatic arch. All right. I want to show you I want to show you where our holes are going to be in the temporal bone. But first of all, I want to show you a perspective of the temporal bone from the bottom of your skull. And again, there's lots of different ways that we can look at our skulls, especially since they all have um, the top chopped off so that we can look inside. Pretty much, look, there's my styloid process. This is my mastoid process. 
there is a foramen called the stylomastoid foramen. Yeah, and guess where that is located? <laughs> right between them. That might be the easiest foramen to know out of all of them. There are other foramens, foramina, that we're going to know, and those are actually easier to see from the looking down into where the brain would sit. But take a look at how the temporal bone sits inside the skull itself. And there's two of them. Now there's this ridge in the temporal bone here, and it's really um, rocky and kind of raised. I don't know if you can see this, but it's right here. It's this big rocky region in our skull. And that area, really, really hard, really protective, because what's inside of it? Your ear, all your sensory structures for your middle and inner ear are actually inside the temporal bone. And when you look at your skull, you'll be able to see depth that we can't see in this picture right here. Also passing through there, through the temporal bone, is the carotid canal. The carotid canal is what's going to carry blood to the brain from the heart. That's a good thing to have. And then um, there was another canal, there was another hole that I wanted to mention. We have an internal auditory canal, and that guy, it's actually this little teeny thing right here, but that's how the cranial nerve from the cranial nerve number eight gets from the brain into the inner ear to bring messages of sound to the brain for processing. That's your temporal bone. Temporal bone is not easy. There's lots of stuff going on there. But this view is nice because you can actually see where it is in relation to everybody else. Occipital bone is next.